Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I am of the stars. And I have a new technique to impart with to you today uh, that had some very unexpected and very nice results. So, I've been having a problem when I go to church. And that is that all of a sudden, I'm so happy to be there, that I start... Um, I start with the astral chatter and and I have a hard time stopping. I'm trying very hard to stop, but I can't. And the people in the church, they don't like that at all. I get all kinds of negative comments about talking. So I try harder and the harder I try, the harder it is to be quiet in church. So there I was in church again today and I thought, I'll try something new, right? So I. I've, and I have tried this before, but not with these kinds of results. I think the atmosphere in church is very helpful to this particular technique. So it went like this. I said, May I visualize my soul all around me, permeating me, my physical body and every awareness level of my existence. And I thought, I thought of my soul, my eternal soul that only just I'm manifesting in the physical reality to, to learn lessons for. So for me, this my soul is, is that essence, that primary essence of me, right? And so some people go on. Uh, I remember one time long ago, a teacher named, I was listening to a lecture by a teacher named Yogi Bhajan, who had an Indian Sikh philosophy. And someone asked him, people asked him all kinds of questions, and he always seemed to know the answer. It was incredible. And uh, one person said, what is a soul like? You know, and I'm all ears about theological issues. I love to hear the answers. And he said, well, he said, a soul is not insubstantial. It, it has substance. It weighs a small portion of a penny, like a tenth of a penny, something like that. This was many years ago. And I'm going, wow, a soul weighs something. A soul has some weight in the physical reality. So, I don't know. Maybe it's like gigantico. And it has this tiny, tiny uh, uh, lack of density weight. That's kind of my feeling is that it's, it's, it's pretty big, you know? And, but other people say that it's very small, but I know that it, I can tell you one thing that everybody would agree on, and, and that is that it's the essence of our being, that reflection of God. That, that it's like um, in the Buddhist, sorry, I'm digressing. I read a, a Zen, yes, a Zen text one time. I was going on about the Zen koans, right, which were new, to, I was 16 at the time. A very new concept to me. Uh, quite a mind boggler and eye opener too, and uh, they told the story. I, I think it was in that text of uh, the woman at the well who had been studying to know God, right, in the Zen way, and she was carrying the water, uh, carrying her water bucket to the well at night. It must have been cold, and so she must have been living a very hard life uh, in attempt to avoid the distractions of civilization so that she could get to the essential uh, process that her soul really wanted to know, and that is how to know the mystery of God, right? So, as I recall, she let her water bucket down into the well, and as she started to pull it out, she could see on the surface of the water the, um, the, uh, the moon, there was the moon reflected in the water. And the moment she saw the moon reflected in the water, she had that aha experience that they call enlightenment in Zen Buddhism. And so I thought about that koan for a very long time, right? And those days there were no explanations. There was just the thinking and the pondering and the wondering. <laughs> so to these days, today, I would say that what she saw in the water, the moon that she saw in the water, was like our own personal eternal soul, which is the reflection of the greater reality of God, Source. So, uh, 
So we all have that essence. We, all, we don't think about it much in Western civilization, but it's impossible to deny that we have an essence. You may quibble over the word soul, but just for the sake of uh, understanding, a general understanding of a term, let's use the word soul right now, okay? So I was in the church and getting ready to be upsetting people and trying hard not to. And I said, then imagining my soul, I said, may my soul speak for me. And then I let my mind be still, right? My mind was still. And then after a short time, I heard someone talking not inside me, not like my mental mind, but more true, speaking greater truth with regard to just about everything. And uh, people were talking to that, what it was, whatever it was. And uh, I could barely hear. And I try not to hear because my mental mind has, my lower mental mind has a tendency to step into conversations and distort reality with the denseness of the third dimension and fourth dimension. I'd have to look up what the lower mind, what dimension it's in. So, uh, um, so but anyway, a lower understanding of truth is what is available to me unless I allow my soul to speak. When it speaks, many truths are revealed that were before um, hidden, both from me and from the people that ask me questions. Huh. So very interesting. My soul knows just about everything about all the people that, that ask. I don't know where it gets this information, things that I had no notion of. So, if you want to astound yourself, get in touch with your own soul and allow it to do the talking for you and see if maybe that completely transforms your earthly existence. Until next time, God bless you all.